today on Steampunk Minecraft airports. That's right, I'm skipping the trains and jumping straight to air travel. But to do this, I'm gonna need a lot of new machines. Complicated ones. Get yourselves comfortable, because we're going in guns a-blazing. Today's episode, we're building planes in Steampunk Minecraft. You want to play mod packs with friends, but you can't seem to find a good server. And the free ones? With the big mod packs these days, free servers are just too laggy. Luckily for you, there's Bisect Hosting. They host my server, and with plenty of affordable options, they can host your server too. And the best part is, they support almost every mod pack. Use code DOUBLESAL at checkout for 25% off your first order. Bisect Hosting, a great site for great servers. Today, I'm gonna do something different. You see, I'm all about progress and innovation, but instead, I've decided to pursue a little vanity project instead. Airplanes. Now there's one thing all aspiring aviators, including myself, understand about these machines. They are extremely expensive to build, and one of these parts requires us to go to the nether. So before making the trip, I decided to take stock of what I had to protect myself, and honestly, it was not looking good. So it was time for a weapons upgrade. And when I say upgrade, believe me that this is a textbook definition of an upgrade. But before I decided to craft one of these beauties, I was first gonna need gunpowder. With no creepers around, it was great to see that gunpowder could actually be crafted. I was gonna need salt, which I could get by boiling water in a cauldron, although I couldn't tell if it was boiling or not. At least until I stepped in. Please don't try this at home. I decided to leave it alone, and went to go browse the extensive weapons catalog. True to my character, I ended up settling for the smallest, cheapest thing, because honestly, anything's better than a bow. After accidentally crafting two of them, I went back to go chug on our boiling water, only to find that all of it was gone, leaving the beautiful salt behind. All it takes is a couple of salt and some coal, and boom! Gunpowder. I crafted some basic bullets, loaded my weapon, and then I eagerly waited for the sun to go down because I was super hyped to test this thing. No animals were harmed in the making of this video. It was time to prep the staging ground for this nether fortress invasion. I began building a bridge, and then I went back to craft the one thing I needed, a blaze burner. With this block, I was gonna be able to trap a blaze like a Pokemon in a Pokeball. Once I entered the fortress, I remained cautious, vigilant, keeping an eye out for anything that could be creeping around these halls. It didn't matter though, I was still ambushed. Thankfully, I came prepared, and I was able to put down that wither skeleton with ease. Unfortunately, I was still succumbing to the heat, but luckily, there was a tool that I had yet to claim, a soul spring lamp. When you have it equipped in your offhand, it keeps you cool. Within seconds, my body temperature began to drop. I was able to freely explore the fortress, encountering a number of hostile mobs on the way, until I finally trapped my blaze. The reason I needed this blaze burner was because it was one of the ingredients to craft an engine. Not only that, but I had to craft a basic steam engine as well. With everything put together, I finally had my engine. But it wasn't good enough. You see, to fly a plane, you need an upgraded engine. And to craft one of those, I was first gonna need some magma blocks. I set sail, and I came across a couple in a swamp. Once I collected those, I swapped out the lava in our fan for some water. When you wash magma blocks, they cool down and turn into obsidian, which I then had to pulverize with my crushing wheels. I put them in the chest, and they went straight into the wheels below, where they were grounded up and formed into this fine powder. I collected the powder as well as the blocks, stashed them away, and began prepping copper casings. I then took a casing, combined it with some kelp, and made a spout. I took a second casing, combined it with iron bars, and made a fluid drain. With these two blocks, I crafted a small yet necessary setup. You see, with the powdered obsidian, we were gonna have to pour lava over it, and we couldn't do it without the spout or the item drain. I attached a hand crank to a cogwheel, allowing the lava to be pumped into the spout. When I put down the powdered obsidian, the lava was automatically applied, but I wasn't done yet. The item was only half-baked. Now with lava, I had to take the powdered obsidian and have it stamped two times with the mechanical press. Like always, I overstressed the water wheels, so I had to take one of the machines off. After that, everything was running smoothly again. When the powdered obsidian was stamped down twice, it became a sturdy sheet. The last ingredient we needed for our advanced engine. After that, I crafted a couple more things like the hull and the airplane propeller. I then went to the mechanical crafter, put all the ingredients together, and for some reason it wasn't working. I was genuinely puzzled because I could have sworn I had everything I needed, but I was wrong. I didn't need regular sails, I needed a large sail. And to make a large sail, you need six of the regular ones, so it was time to go craft a bunch of sails. I went to the garden and harvested some of the hemp fibers that I had been growing. When you combine three of the fibers together, you get string. And when you combine four string together, you get wool. 
It took a while, but I was finally able to craft my large sails. The mechanical crafter was modified to fit the recipe, and after that, everything came together. The airplane was crafted, it was finally time to take to the skies. I went to bed, woke up the next morning, and I got into that plane, hoping to fly away, but you need fuel to fly a plane, and I don't know why this didn't occur to me. Then I noticed that the plane had its own menu including upgrade slots, but above all else, it had a fuel slot. And I did not know what I had to put in here to make this thing go. I did a little research and saw that we could actually make fuel with the immersive engineering mod, although there were a number of items and a number of machines that I had to craft. It all began by crushing seeds with a mechanical press. This made seed oil. Now, for some reason, I thought that with seed oil, I could just fuel the flame with that. But unfortunately, it was going to take a little more refining. The first step was to craft an industrial squeezer. And to do this, we were going to need all of those blocks that you see right there. I decided to start with the barrel because that was just made out of wood. Unfortunately, I discovered that I needed a special type of wood. For the crafting recipe to work, the planks had to be treated with a special type of liquid. You see that bucket of brown? That is called creosote oil. And the only way you can make that is by burning wood in a coke oven. And to make that, you need coke bricks. Thankfully, these were pretty easy to craft and we had everything we needed to make them. Once I crafted the bricks, I assembled the coke oven, which was arguably one of the most simplistic machines I was gonna build today. The only problem was like the plane, I didn't know how to fuel this thing. But the interface did look similar to that of the kiln that we made in the previous episode, so I guessed it was powered with lava, which meant I was gonna need an infinite lava source. I would use the classic hose pulley trick, just lower the hose into the lava and have it pumped out. I cleared a space underneath the factory to make the conveyor belt as well as the nether portal. It took a while, but once I was able to get it up and running, I went to the nether to duplicate the setup on the other side. All of it powered by wind, of course. For the rest of the night, I ended up making small adjustments because honestly, I did not get it right the first time. But once everything was up and running, I finally had my infinite lava. Empty buckets would go on to the nether, get filled with lava, and then they would come out the other side and go into the tank. All that was left to do now was to beautify the area. I stick with the orange acacia log look, keeping a consistent feel for our base. I added some trap doors, as well as some brick walls creating this basement-like area. And up on top, a system of pumps that would allow me to fill my buckets whenever I wanted. With our infinite lava, it was finally time to power the coke oven, and wouldn't you know it, it did not take the lava. But the question remained, what did I need to get this thing running? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I just needed to put the wood in, and it burned on its own. Slowly but surely, I was generating creosote oil, and when there was enough, I was able to harvest it by the bucket, slap it on a crafting table, and create treated wood. Although the name of that achievement did make me feel a little uncomfortable. I crafted the barrel, along with some other components needed to make the industrial squeezer. One of the more interesting blocks was the sheet metal, one of the necessary ingredients to craft an engineering block. I also had to craft a redstone engineering block. And lastly, the most interesting yet simple process, in my opinion, was the creation of steel. With the steel, I made scaffolding and then an engineer's manual, because I had no idea how to assemble this machine. Thankfully, the manual was very informative, and it even included an animated diagram showing where the blocks went. I followed the instructions step by step until I finally had the industrial squeezer. Now, the big question, like the previous questions, how do I power this? Before I went on making something that I didn't need to make, I tried the coke oven method and simply put the items in the machine. That didn't work. There was a power generator I had to craft, and the first step in making it was by crafting wire cutters. With the wire cutters, I could cut up copper sheets and turn them into copper wire. With enough copper wire, you could make a copper coil. And with enough coils, you could make a copper coil block. With that being said, that was probably the most expensive item to craft this generator. Now, how do I get this thing to work? There was a big hole in the middle, so I was wondering if I could actually power it with one of the create shafts. I connected it to anything that was rotating, but that didn't seem to be it. I referred back to the book and saw that the only way you could power this was with a windmill or a water wheel, so I opted for the windmill, and when I placed it down, it was invisible. I guess it didn't adapt well with the shaders, so I had to turn them off to actually see if there was something there, and thankfully there was. I then had to craft sheets to go over the windmill. Once I was able to apply all lates, I then had to search for a place where I could put it. Thankfully, we did have a tower with nothing on it, the perfect place to put a windmill blade. I collected the motor, attached it to the windmill blade, and while it didn't start working automatically, after a couple of seconds, it finally started rotating. Power was being generated, now we just needed a place to store it. Introducing the LV accumulator, basically a battery. 
To craft it, I made a bucket of redstone acid, this liquid that looks like Kool-Aid. I then had to go into the caves and mine some lead. Once the lead was refined and pressed into sheets, I combined all the items together to make our battery. I stuck it next to the generator, but for some reason it wasn't receiving the power. Turns out you have to toggle the sides with a hammer. One side for inputting energy, and another side for outputting it. The next step was to transfer the energy. That's where the wire connectors come into play. With some copper and terracotta, we could create these useful components that could transfer the energy anywhere we wanted. In short, these items could connect copper wires together. A pretty useful thing to have when you need power going from point A to point B. So I crafted a bunch of them, placed them in a row, and tried to connect all the wires together. But for some reason, once they were connected to another one, they couldn't connect to anything else. This is because I needed a wire relay. With the relay, you can make as many connections as you want. I placed the relays along the walls and started connecting the wires together. The goal was to transfer power from the tower to the industrial squeezer. And once I placed the block in the appropriate spot and connected all the wires together, the machine was finally activated. I put the seeds in, they were being crushed, and the result was seed oil. And yes, I could have used the mechanical press like before, but with this machine, I could make way more seed oil at a faster rate. We were one step closer to making my desired fuel, biodiesel. But to make biodiesel, we needed a couple more things. For starters, a refinery, the machine that actually made the diesel. I went to get silver, crushed it into powder, and combined it with gold to make electrum. Reason being was because it was one of the necessary ingredients for a heavy engineering block, a necessary part of our refinery. I followed the instructions in the engineering manual and put my refinery together piece by piece. With the click of a hammer, the refinery was finally complete. Lastly, I made an industrial fermenter with some of the leftover blocks from the refinery. Reason being was because the fermenter was essential for making ethanol, another ingredient we needed for our biodiesel. The final ingredient for our fuel was nitrate dust, and the only way we could make that was with the crusher. Think of it like a more mechanized version of the crushing wheels. The crusher was gonna break up sandstone and spit out nitrate dust. By this point, I was already running out of room. Thankfully, I had just enough space to build this last machine. I was so happy when the crusher was complete because that was the last thing we needed to build. Now we could finally get to making our fuel, but not before we throw in the sandstone and get our nitrate dust. The only tricky part was actually putting the ingredients into the refinery because the interface was kind of glitched and so when I poured the ethanol down, I got really high on the fumes. After working it all out, the biodiesel was finally being generated. I sat in the plane, put the bucket in, and came to the realization that I just wasted hours of my time because it didn't take biodiesel either. So yeah, clown me in the comments, say whatever you want. It doesn't matter because now I was flying. And I'm gonna be honest, the flying is a little janky, maybe I'm just not that good at it, but I'm sure with a little practice I could become an expert pilot. I did a lap around the surrounding area looking for potential building sites for future projects. After all, we still have to build a railroad, and we need to know what terrain lies ahead. But yeah. And here's an expert tip for all of you aspiring pilots out there. When you're flying your plane, make sure you don't fall out. I misclicked and fell into the river below. Yeah, that was the last time I saw that plane. But you know what, it's okay, because I ended up making a new one. And what's a plane without an airport? I mean, obviously planes have to come back down and land somewhere. Anyways, this looks like a pretty good spot to put one. I began smelting more stone than I've ever smelted before. This is because I was gonna put the airport on a pretty big foundation. It took a while, but once the foundation was finally complete, I began building the first structure. I then proceeded by constructing the hangars for the airplanes themselves. After multiple in-game days worth of work, the main structures were finally complete. The only thing left to do now was to actually prepare the runway, which I was able to distinguish with the help of some sandstone slabs. Yes, this was a handsome airport. And the runway? Well, I kinda eyeballed it, but I'm sure that's more than enough space for the plane to take off. As for the inside of the main building, well, there wasn't much to look at. I have yet to put anything in there, but I'm sure it'll serve a purpose eventually. As for the hangars, well, there was plenty of space for multiple airplanes. The only thing missing was light. It was extremely dark on the runway, and I needed a fancy way of lighting it all up, so I opted for immersive engineering lampposts. All I had to do was slap a lantern on, but before I could do that, I had to craft a light bulb. And to make a light bulb, I needed a special crafting table. I converted it into an engineer's workbench, and there I tried to craft a light bulb, but to no avail. It turns out that I needed a blueprint. Once I was able to craft the blueprint, I put it into the workbench and saw all of the recipes I could make with it. But today, I was only gonna make light bulbs. After that, I crafted the lantern and tried linking it to the post, but for some reason it didn't work. 
That was until I slapped it with an engineer's hammer. I set up the post next to the plane hangers. After that, I attached the lanterns as well as the relays for the power lines. The setup was nearing its completion, when all of a sudden I was ambushed by this horde of goblin people. After taking care of the threat, I began working on my power grid, placing down posts which would act as relays for our power lines. The sun set, the lines were up! All I had to do now was to make the final connection. Once everything was linked up, our airport came to life. I even decided to add some street lights to our road. I know this is steampunk Minecraft, and yes, we are gonna have some steam machines, but come on. It's pretty hard to turn a blind eye to electricity. I mean, look how nice this looks. The runway was a little dim though, so I decided to line the edges with torches. I worked well into the morning, until the sun finally began rising over our brand new airport. With the addition of the new airport, the future of our steampunk world was looking golden. All that was left to do was to inaugurate the runway with the first flight. I took the plane out of the hangar, put it on the runway, and finally, the runway was now in use. I'm still gonna have to put some practice into my piloting skills though. Well, there you have it friends, an airport. Tune in next time to see what I'm gonna build next. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Be sure to leave your feedback down below. I will see you next time. This has been Double Sal. Have a great day.